Hey everybody, welcome to Acro Classics. Today I thought I'd do a quick little tutorial on how to flash update your Terrible Fire 1260. I know a lot of people have seen the firmwares that have been out and it's kind of tough to, to do this if you're not sure what to do. I know I had a little bit of difficulty with it, so I decided why not do this quick little video just to show you the way that I do it. Uh, John Hertel, I need to thank him. He actually showed me how to do it this way. And I think it's probably the simplest way to do it, you know, out of out of all the ways. Instead of using the expensive Flash programmers and the software you have to install, building the Raspberry Pi and doing it that way, or uh, having to have it inside your Amiga and powered, it's it's just I, I don't know this I think might be a little bit easier I had a lot of time so anyways let's let's go ahead and get to it of course what you're gonna need is your 1260 here and the way that I do it if you notice you can see I solder in a pin header right here so this is your day JTAG port normally when you get them shipped to you it's going to be empty here some people use one of these and put this on the end of their cable and just stick it into the holes and turn it sideways. Uh, if you do that, it'll make contact. Um, this is the way that I do it now when people ship me theirs here in, in the U.S. Uh, I'm in California, and it's quick. It works pretty good. You just have to make sure that you remember to hold it and get a good contact and don't move it while you flash it. Um, using this method is going to be the exact same way as if you had this soldered on or not. So don't really pay much attention to that. The next thing you're going to need, well you don't need it, but it makes things life a whole lot easier as you'll see in a moment, is a USB extension cable because it's like this, if FTDG tip, and I'll show you the website where this is at, but this uh, FTDI chip cable is your flash programmer which you're going to use and we'll go ahead and open this up. And just pull this out and I've, I've already set this up myself and I'll walk you through again and show you what it is. So the order that you need to do these in is you're going to need these cables here so you're going to need brown, yellow, green, orange, and black in that order and those correspond with if you look on the end here there's some printing you know you'll see what they are so they're TMS, TDI, TD0, tick, ground, and your 3V3, which is your volts. So starting in that direction, you're going to use the brown one on this side, which is your TMS, and you're going to plug it in, just like so. So it should look like that, so you can kind of get a good glimpse at it to see the order that it goes in. And then in my case, I don't want to have this plugged into an Amiga to get power to the CPLDs here. What I want to do is I'm going to use this red wire and this red wire is three volts on this cable and I'm just going to go ahead and plug it on. So now the way that this is set up is it is going to be completely powered. So I'm going to go ahead and undo my USB extension cord here and I'm going to plug it in. Then I'm going to take the end of my cable here and you'll probably hear it. So Windows detects it, cable's plugged in, straight onto the board, everything's ready to go. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and switch over to the screen so you can see exactly what's going on here. So here's the website that you're going to go to. In order to, to get this you can buy it directly through them uh, you can also get it on eBay if you search for the description of it again so if you want to look on eBay you're going to need a FTDI chip C232HM-DDHSL-0 cable um, unfortunately it looks like quite a few people have started seeing these and they can get kind of pricey at times um, they average around 50 bucks uh, but again, this is the easiest way. The next thing that you're going to need 
is these files. So I'll show you what these are. So the top one here is, is just my the flash script that I got from, from John. Uh, this is the libusb DLL. That way you don't have to install any software. These are the two new files for the terrible fire, the firmware, which, which is located on the site. I will show you that as well. And if you have the faster RAM, that's what this one's for. So these three files in here all come in the archive that you can download. And then this is the actual flash programming software that you're going to need. This is the same one that you compile for the Raspberry Pi if you do it, by the way. This is just a Windows version. And let me go ahead and show you the web browser window here again. And we'll show you the software that you need to actually flash it where you get the firmware from. So we'll go back to the web page here. And if you go onto the Exos forums and look for this thread, the TF1260 beta firmware, very first post right here directly from Terrible Fire has the attachments in here so that you can go ahead and get them. You're just you're gonna want to download this this one right here and inside that will be those three files. Now where you get the software to flash this, now you can go ahead and message me and I'll send it to you. Uh, John gave it to me, but that's where you're going to want to get that from. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And going back to the command window, so this is what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to open up your command window. And again, I had showed you that I use a script for it. So if we get a directory in, in here, You can see that I've got the files. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run that batch file that I showed you that I call flash. So I'm just gonna type in flash and it's going to start programming. If you notice, it's programming right now, CPLD number one. That's done, and now it's programming CPLD number two. And it's done, and that's it. It is flashed, and it's complete and ready to go. So what we do is we go back, and again, what you're gonna need, is, again, is the cables that I showed you. Terrible fire, plug it in, and it's ready to go. Real quick, real simple, nothing too complicated. Again, I just wanted to show you a quick video on how I do it. No fancy software needed, no like external dev kits, no expensive cables. I know a lot of people are using um, this cable over here, uh, these Xilinx flashers. So these work pretty good. A real one is going to cost you, you know, several hundred dollars. Um, there's no point in it. This does just as good a job. You don't have to install this giant Xilinx dev software. Just what I showed you. Quick, easy DOS prompt. I'll probably package up that software for you so it's all in one way to go. Hope you enjoyed this. And again, if you need any help, I'm more than happy to do this for you. Just for the cost of you sending me your terrible fire if you're in the US. Um, I'll flash it for you, test it, and send it right back again at, at, at your cost, and that's it. Um, easy to go. Or, you, of course, you can send it back to Alan in Canada, or if you're in Europe, uh, John is doing them as well, I believe. Um, I believe there's somebody in the UK that's doing it as well, and also Australia. But again, if you're in the US and you want it done, just shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to do it. Again, you can go to my website at www.acl.com. That's A-C-I-L-L.com. And you can get in touch with me there. Or you can find me anywhere on the web that you know where I hang out. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time.